Welcome to the Film Society of Lincoln Center and our ongoing in Indie Night series, our relatively new Indie Night series. It's the fourth one, and we're, we're happy it's also our fourth uh, sold-out screening. And tonight is kind of a, a special night because the film that we're showing is actually produced by my uh, partner in crime on this uh, series, who you'll meet uh, shortly, Ted Hope. But as uh, one character in the film says, uh, it's not like it's nepotism or anything. You know, the film actually really deserves to be in this uh, series. Of course, uh, the director, Todd Solons, is no stranger to the Film Society audience uh, many times in the New York Film Festival. And uh, uh, personally, I think that, that this movie goes places that he's never gone before. I think it's, it's his most audacious film visually, uh, narratively. I think it has amazing performances by uh, a couple of actors who we're also very pleased to have with us uh, tonight, uh, Jordan Gelber and the great uh, two-time uh, Tony Award winner, Donna Murphy, uh, so all of whom will be joining us for Q&A after the screening. And uh, I want to thank our presenting sponsor for Indie Night, uh, the Royal Bank of Canada, and also our newest sponsor, Fandor, and to tell you a little bit more about that, it's my pleasure to introduce the co-founder and uh, vice president of acquisitions for Fandor, Jonathan Marlowe. Yeah, that thing over there, Fandor. So yes, uh, everything Scott said was true. Uh, just delighted to be here, delighted that uh, we're sponsoring this event and also The Art of the Real. Um, in fact, uh, the, the producer of tonight's film is pretty much entirely responsible for us even being here. He told us that he was doing the series actually before the series began, and I said, how can we be a part of that? And here we are. So uh, I just wanted to say a couple of things. There are, uh, there are three ways in which you are all very incredibly fortunate. One is that this place exists, and you probably already know that. The other is that uh, Scott Foundas is here. Uh, I was introduced to him by um, Tom Luddy, who has a habit of in introducing lots of people, and uh, I'm looking forward to spending a bit of time with Scott now that he lives on the opposite coast uh, in Telluride this year. You are going back, I hope. Of course he is. Um, but also, you're so fortunate that Ted Hope is doing this series. Um, I was here for the last one, and um, you know, you how you're, you're the thing is, you, you don't understand how lucky you are that this even happens. So uh, I'm, I'm delighted that you're all here. I hope you like the movie. Uh, if you don't, um, you're obviously something's wrong with you. So uh, I, with this, I would like to introduce the wonderful, the great, my personal close friend, sort of, Ted Hope. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, so, so around whenever it was, August of some time ago, last year, we premiered this film at the Venice Film Festival. So it's been a long road getting it here to bring to you. The idea, you know, basically, that's why we started this whole series, so that I could eventually bring you Dark Horse. You know, <laughs> it takes the entire world to swim for one week to fall. Um, but uh, um, this, the films in the series have all been undistributed films or will be films that are distributed by the filmmakers who have made them. And that's the case here. Uh, in order to bring uh, this film by truly my favorite filmmaker out there to you, we had to also build a company to do that. That is a group of super talented people that are not getting paid what they should be in order that so they can work on films like this. Um, we've been doing this with, uh, you know, just a lot of hard work, a little bit of money, and a lot of uh, good friendships from people like the Film Society. Uh, this, the film opens on Friday at the Angelica. Uh, we will be doing Q and A's there at the 7:30 show and intros at the 10 10 o'clock show. If you like what you see tonight, I'm dependent on you to tell everybody to please go. The film will be playing all summer long throughout the country, but it starts in New York, and our ability to expand beyond you know, 25 cities is based on your good word. So my life is in your hands. Todd's future is in your hands. The movie deserves your love. It's a dark horse, but hopefully we can win this with your help. So uh, you know, I hope you
you like it, we'll be back. Todd's here. And as Scott said, Deanna and Jordan, too. And then afterwards, to show our appreciation uh, for all of the hard work you, you'll be doing, we would like to, uh, uh, for you to join us for a glass of wine, dark horse wines, mind you, uh, in the room. When you come out of the theater, if you bang a hard right before going out into the lobby, there's a concession area, and uh, Todd, myself, the actors will be there. And so will the Dark Horse Wine. So come join us. Thank you. Um, and have a good evening. Yeah. Uh, please welcome, uh, well, Todd Solons, who's standing right here, and uh, Jordan Gelber and Donna Murphy. Let me just begin by asking you sort of where this group of characters started for you. Did you want to make a movie about a man of a certain age still living at home with his parents? Uh, was there another point of entry? Was it this idea of sort of dark horses versus front runners? Well, I, 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 um, I, I was thinking first uh, and, and budge in terms of budge that I wanted to Sorry. <laughs> um, I okay, yeah. So I, I was thinking first in terms of budget. I wanted to design something that could be done at, 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 at a, a, on a very small scale, and and I and I wanted to do a boy meets girl story, <laughs> and this uh, happens. Um, boy meets girl with hepatitis. Well, of, uh, you know, I just it it just things emerged, you know, over the. <laughs> The process of writing is always mysterious, and um, I, I, uh, you know, there, there is, of course, uh, is something of a genre, the man-child genre, uh, that uh, and not only apotope but television. You know, it's all over the place. That that uh, that uh, those tropes or that uh, and so forth, um, and uh, so it, I, I, I did think it was. Uh, uh, the material that maybe I could have another approach to, uh, another approach, a kind of alternative. Um, uh, this, you know, the, the character, you know, he's very, uh, well he's not very prepossessing, you know, he's, he's, he's very, he's very uh, abrasive and, and uh, uh, obnoxious and, and so forth. Um, uh, but what interested me was was uh, was really his inner life, the vulnerability of this character, um, and and I always find it something. I sort of set a kind of challenge, I suppose, with the audience, and uh, to, to 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 test, I suppose, the limits of one's sympathies. Um, uh, d d in much the same way, I suppose, even in, in uh, with Bill Maple, the pedophile in in, in uh, Happiness. Uh, you know, a character you don't perhaps want to sit down and have dinner with this person, um, but um, it, it's it's uh, uh, but recognizing that there is a, a real uh, human pulse there, a bleeding heart, uh, really uh, that that I think moves me. And um, since we're fortunate to have your two of your stars with us tonight, can can you talk a, a little bit about the the casting process and, and how you how you decided on Jordan and Donna and then I want to ask them a little bit about their experience working with you. Well, well, Jordan and Donna, I had both I'd worked with. I mean, I had, I had uh, both of them had auditioned for me. I mean, on on, on earlier uh, pr film projects of mine, and um, uh, d d d Donna I was just uh, you know dying to work with for so long. You know, I just. Is everything's timing and luck and the ability. Can I? Am I allowed to cast Donna? You know, <laughs> um, and and uh, and and Jordan also I had an audition for something else, and I I had um, uh, uh, seen him in a play of Mike Lee's a few years ago uh, that uh, made an impression on me about 
how suitable he might be for this part if I were able to cast uh, someone who was not a celebrity. And for the actors, can you talk a little bit about uh, just sort of entering into Todd's world and also about uh, these characters, which seem to me like dream parts for actors because they're not characters that you see often in movies. I, I, uh, I mean, Donna, your character, it's hard to think of uh, a character like that, uh, uh, this, this sort of, you know, half cougar, vixenish character, half mild-mannered secretary. You don't see this kind of thing every day, and it seems to give you a wonderful range to play as a, as a performer. Yeah, the, ch the chance to do anything with Todd I would be something that I would jump up and down to, to and, you know, part the waters to, to make happen. And um, because I think he's uh, a, a true visionary, and he, but he is, in, in having uh, incredible vision and incredible imagination and, and very distinct perspective on things, he's also a wonderful communicator to, to his actors. Um, when I read the script, I was fascinated by, well, the whole piece, but I was fascinated by Marie's journey, but I didn't, I wasn't quite clear about what was real, if you will, yeah. what was actually happening. Um, and I first read the script at a time when I was supposed to come in and meet with Todd about the project, and, and I had something going on in my personal life, and I wasn't able to come in. And um, l life, you know, sometimes there's just a serendipity about things, and I ended up being asked to do the film, and uh, met with Todd at the costume fitting, if you remember <laughs> we met. <laughs> I mean, literally, it was a couple of days before we were starting shooting, and he was so clear without sort of laying things out in a um, on-the-nose way. There was still mm -hmm. elements that were somewhat mysterious, um, and we together had a dialogue about how to um, explore this character who is this woman on her own journey, her mm -hmm. own kind of sad, small life, but who plays a major role in this other, in this young man's life. Um, and, and that duality of how she is manifested in his, in his mind. Yeah. I mean, not just obviously in the scenes that "Quote unquote," really happened, yeah. but the scenes that happened in his mind, and and what the evolution of that was, and I remember talking about, you know, would we costume her differently, mm -hmm. and or would we have the same clothes that we would fit differently, and at a point, Todd said, you know, I I really feel like I would just like it to come from you, you know, have your physicality change, the way you carry yourself, perhaps, and of course how you play her intentions and um, and so my job was really to serve what was needed in the storytelling of what kind of what what he needed to hear what this character needed to hear and and different tacts you know because I think she really did care about him I think she was you know he, Todd was speaking about how testing the the uh, ability of an audience to be sympathetic towards mm -hmm. a character who is not necessarily easy to be sympathetic towards. Ev and for me, she just saw his heart. She saw that beating heart every day. And, um, b and she, but she was always truthful with him. And I, I loved that about her. You know, it was gentle. It wasn't hard until it started to need to become hard. And some of that you know, uh, there's a kind of this overlap in, in Abe's life as he started to imagine her there or maybe just hear her voice, and then we did. But we did go to the, the coffee shop. We did go to the coffee shop together, <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who <laughs> is confused about that. Um, but it was, uh, you know, to be able to take a journey like that that's so beautifully justified and, um, and have a writer director who so clear and and at the same time so open to ideas that I might have or questions I might have was uh, a dream it was a dream
and I am grateful. Jordan, maybe you can actually uh, talk a little bit more about what, what Don is saying about the, the, the Todd's direction and, and the clarity of it, because I always feel when you see one of Todd's movies that everyone is so on the same wavelength. I mean, it's a, it's a very stylized universe that he creates, and everybody kind of inhabits it so beautifully, and they all, they all seem cut from the same cloth. I mean, you instantly believe Mia Farrow and Christopher Walken as your parents, and uh, there's almost, uh, and, and I feel especially in, the, in these recent films, there's almost a kind of a, 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 a stylized kind of graphic quality. They're almost like comic book panels. And how does Todd get everyone on this the same kind of mental space when he's directing? I, I mean, um, I you think you'd probably m have to ask Todd that a little bit because um, it doesn't feel like a style when I'm working on it mm -hmm. or in it or with Todd. It really feels like... Um, a, a, a tr a truthful to mm -hmm. me uh, and and I think um, as an actor I really connect to that he he doesn't go for um, easy jokes or gratuitous anything it's um, there's um, uh, a, a crystal clear kind of quality to the writing mm -hmm. and and to the direction uh, so that you don't stray and and kind of you everyone is on the same page and that's I think yeah. you know one of his amazing talents as a director uh, and as a writer, I, you know, um, uh, I, I had such a connection to this character, to the writing when I first read it, um, uh, you know, which I think is a big part of why I was able to uh, impress him with, with my audition. Uh, that uh, it, well, I didn't have to, to reach because I, I, I felt like I had lived those mo certain moments right. uh, that, that, there was, that were real. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this. What you, I think what you might call style or stylization yeah. is more in the framing and the uh, the art direction and the editing. But uh, in performance, I always felt like we were we were going for these very specific moment to moment scenes. And Todd, um, can you uh, talk uh, because Donna was talking about the you know the scenes that are sort of in a fixed reality in, in the film, and then the scenes that take place in characters. Minds. I was uh, I was very impressed with how you how sort of effortlessly you go in and out of that without any of the sort of tropes we think of in movies that cue us that we're in a dream sequence or we're in a fantasy sequence and uh, it it almost reminded me of Bunuel at times some some th passages in the film and and was that one of the uh, one of the things that sort of when you were writing that you wanted to explore in this piece to to sort of get into that realm of surrealism. flatter me <laughs> with these <laughs> kinds of questioning and, and so forth but I I really I I'm, I'm I, I you know when I write I'm I, I I'm not so smart really I I just I, you know I, I it's like I'm still 11 years old and I just I, if I can't follow it as an 11 year old I, I don't think I it, it's it's the I can follow it um, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, I, I, I don't know if an audience can. Um, I, I just, uh, it, it's just a fantasy using that in cinema is of course not a new thing. It's just, uh, it's just another way of, of dramatizing the inner life, the, uh, the, the, uh, the fears, the em emotional turmoil. Uh, this character is, 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 is breaking down and, and that sense of being unanchored. Uh, is this real or is it not? What, uh, it could help uh, heighten that sense. And I think what m was most important was just whether or not you were sure it was real or not real, that the emotional trajectory of the scene um, had clarity. And uh, why a Toys R Us? Well, there's there's no rival, really. <laughs> I no, I, I mean more the I the idea of the toy store I as I it's as it's kind it's of it's symbol it's or it's an empire, um, and and I I um it's iconic. I I just I I love uh, the, the image. I love the design even of that logo. We're not allowed to show. <laughs> um, I d d d d d the the. Uh, uh, Scott was asking me about uh, what we could have possibly done in the Dominican Republic, um, but that's where we found our interior for the Toys R Us. 
um, since the, the company would not allow me uh, because of my reputation um, <laughs> uh, to um, uh, use their logo or shoot inside one of their um, uh, stores. Uh, but it, it is, you know, so emblematic of, of uh, 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 the, the world we live in, of uh, the, uh, a certain kind of uh, culture, and, and, and the, the uh, uh, that I think the movie uh, is uh, certainly explicit enough. I don't, I, I don't think I need to explain here, but, uh, but um, I did feel that blurring would uh, d uh, be uh, d like in what you see in reality television or documentaries, you know, where you're used to that. Where, but if I had changed the name to like, uh, I don't know, Toy Town, uh, it just would have been phony. Like, sort of like when you go to the movies and you see someone write down, like a crick, write down this number, it's 555, <laughs> and, and it just pulls you out <laughs> immediately. Um, so I, 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 I've, I've always felt that, you know, the audience should know what the director intended. I want to take some questions from the audience, starting in the back, yes? It's a question about uh, uh, yeah, that what yeah. this uh, what this viewer refers to as the golden I, yeah, coach. I, I uh, we're talking about Renoir. I reference to Jean Renoir. In, in, in this, it's a golden um, Hummer or it's, other. It's a Hummer. Yes, it's 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 a Hummer. Is the name of the 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 brands of this car, and um, yes, oh, it, it is of course uh, conspicuous consumption, what have you. But what I liked about it was that it was uh, uh, emblematic of. Uh, you know, it's just like it was like another toy, like a corgi car that uh, that he might have in his collection at home, and it just seemed uh, just most suitable for the character. Other questions? Yes, here. Yeah. No, I, 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 how much did the movie change? I, I, I always <coughs> drop, uh, you know, I, it's funny because I think I drop less than I, uh, uh, fewer actors, fewer scenes, fewer than I usually drop. Um, you know, every time I think I've got some genius script, you know, I, I just, I always, you know, reality hits me in the cutting room and, and I, and I rewrite, I rewrite it, I refigure it out. Um, uh, but in, in, so in this movie, nothing terribly substantive um, uh, I, I was removed. Um, we just, you know, it, it, how did it change? All I can say is when you get that first cut, it only gets less terrible as you go along. <laughs> Actually, I, I just to follow up on that, I wanted to ask you, because this, this really is quite intimate for you. We think of you as a kind of, uh, you know, making Altman-esque, uh, you know, ensemble films. And, and this really is more of a solo um, character study. Was that, was that a, a challenge in the writing at all, to stay focused on one character like that? Well, it's always, I mean, to write any script, to, to, to tell a story that engages, is always a challenge. It's always good. Um, uh, hard, I mean, hard work. But um, and, and every every story, every movie has its particular difficulties and challenges. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it doesn't have you know it has its uh, peculiar sorts of ambitions. Um, uh, but I, I it is certainly not a political film uh, quite. Uh, w let's say in the way uh, other uh, other of my work might might be described. Um, even if it, you could argue there's some sort of political critique implicit. Um, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it, it people sometimes ask, was this the hardest scene? Was, you know, was that a really hard scene? So every scene is so fucking hard, you know. <laughs> there's uh, every one of them, every moment that's up there is a killer. It's just, it's so painstaking, and, and I don't really, I was never, you know, I direct, and, and I, I have, I, and I, it, it's such a stressful uh, job. I'm not really cut out for it, but um, I, uh, my character, my personality is just not cut out for it, but um, I, I do, uh, it's because I, I care so much about what I am putting out there that it causes me so much stress. Um, but 
Uh, you know, some people, I think Ang Lee is like one of them who will say, you know, he never feels more alive than when he is on set. And and me, you know, I just feel my obituaries, you know, Mr. Solon's collapse, the th th three days since the shoot, you know. So it just is, it, that's my character. Other questions for Todd and the actors? Oh, don't be shy. Yes, here, yes. Well, of course, there are, uh, there are many directions I suppose I could have. I just, um, I liked, but I liked the direction I, I pursued. I found, um, uh, you know, to me, there's a, there's a kind of twist, which I, I found very poignant that this movie is so much focused around the fantasy life, the inner life of this character, Abe. But, uh, but then at the, you know, and, and, and this character who I, 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 I who, who has this uh, speech about, you know, the, Horrible! How horrible humanity is! Very mm -hmm. cynical, very juvenile. Um, uh, but but then, uh, at the very end of the movie, there's a kind of turn, a twist, and then that final so that that final fantasy, in fact, is 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 uh, Donna's over there. That you know that that uh, uh, there is someone, in fact, who who cares. Who uh, there's a kind of tenderness and and heartbreaking um, uh, quality to uh, the the affection that. Uh, she she had for him uh, that undermines um, his quote unquote philosophy. Um, so so uh, I I liked the, what I liked in particular was that this 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 twist from uh, shifting at the end, having a little kind of Philip there, where where it's it's uh, it it then becomes hers. Yes. A question, do you do a lot of takes of each scene? <laughs> you know, it depends on who you ask. You ask me, I say never enough, but you ask the producer, it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm in trouble, you know. But I, I, I you know, I try, I, you know, I, I try to get what I need and move on. Because, uh, you know, when you're working on a, a, a low-budget film, you just don't have the time um, even if you're not shooting on film, you just, it's all about time as is money, you know, you just don't, you can't afford to do so many takes, even as it may be pleasurable to do, to, to, to see what an actor will do next. You, you, uh, uh, you live in a certain economic reality that, that you uh, have to be alert to. Well, I guess actually it'd be interesting to ask the actors also, I mean, how does working on a low budget film with a shorter schedule and and less time for things like rehearsal and multiple takes and I mean Donna you're saying you basically didn't even meet Todd till a couple of days before yeah, I had you met him before how how does that affect your process versus something where you might have more time to develop a, a character uh, like doing a, a play well it's very different from doing a play certainly where you have a structured rehearsal mm. process that also never feels <laughs> long enough, <laughs> but it's it's different. You also have every night another chance to go out and you know try something different. But uh, I found it interesting that in in the independent films that I've done, um, very often time is is used uh, to me in in a in a in a smarter way. I, I have been on big films where I've been shocked at you know, working three weeks on one scene. Mm. Um, and not that there aren't m huge challenges that that challenge everyone um, when you're working on a, on a low budget film. Um, but in terms of my work as, as an actress, um, you, you work with what you got. Mm. And, and there is something about kind of also you get inside a rhythm and it's it's condensed and you're in that world and it's not spread over three or four months where you uh, s feel a, a sort of distancing from from the work. Uh, I certainly didn't work every day, right. but I, I never felt disconnected. I was thinking about her in a very concentrated way for how many weeks t was the shoot for this time? 25 days. It was 20, I mean, so, yeah. Okay. 
because he probably worked every day. So right? he was counting those days on the call sheet, right? But so yeah, I mean that that's a very that's a concentrated amount of time, and I there's something to me that that's very positive in that it's challenging, but um, I you get into a mode and you are you're in that and you're not stepping away from it uh, and. Um, so uh, maybe that's you know making lemonade from from lemons, but it 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 really has been for the most part the time element has not been a, a negative thing for me. I, um, I I love hitting the ground running. I love getting immersed in it, like uh, in a very intense burst personally, uh, so I can because it I mean allows me to continue to f stay in that world uh, and uh, oh, you know like a like a like in a crucible, yeah. that, that you know, you, you you have to you have to go, or or you're, you know, if you don't keep swimming, you'll die, kind yeah. of a thing. Uh, and you know, I kind of, I enjoy because uh, you know, I know it's a short enough time that I can separate myself from my own life, or that you know, my wife, family, whatever, and uh, I can just focus for a month, mm -hmm. in this case, on on really doing the work. Uh, and I mean, I, I find that with uh, the lower budget films, the, I feel like there's. Uh, the actors get a little more uh, time to, you know, uh, I, there's more focus on performance in a way sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, that there's more collaboration because I think you're not dealing with, you know, flying saucers and the yeah. Avengers or whatever, and it's it's really more about telling the story through through action, through acting. I think we're, we're just about out of time, but I want to thank uh, Todd and Jordan and Donna and uh, and all of you for being here and, and remind everybody to join us now for some dark horse wine at the at the reception in our uh, our room that doesn't really have a name but if you go out the theater and make a right and go all the way down to the end of the hall you'll be there so we'll see you there thank you very much thank you, thank you. oh and I also want to rem remember to. Ted reminded me to say this, that our next film in the Indie Night series next month is a wonderful movie uh, called Kid Thing by the Zellner Brothers, which I can only sort of describe as um, uh, like if uh, Terrence Malick and Harmony Kareen made a children's film together, it would be this movie. So uh, hopefully we'll see some of you back for that.